Coutinho. I think he's going to probably cross bef not too long from now. Particularly if he heads the way he's heading, he's going to head up onto the cut line. But at least we managed to find him, which is awesome news. So well done, Senzo. Champion. If it wasn't, like I say, if it wasn't for Senzo, I don't know if we would have found them. It was, I said to him that he must be here somewhere because when we heard him roar, it was exactly this direction. And then the tracks just disappeared off the road and then Senzo said, no, there he is over there. So it was a really good spot. He spotted him from far away. But Tinho is looking fantastic. He's got a nice big full belly, obviously, from that buffalo that we were talking about. And what has he seen here? He's coming and sniffing around, and there's actually a hole in the ground here. So just here is a hole. I wonder if there isn't maybe some warthogs that came running out of here or something that went towards this area that caught his attention, and that's why he's come to this area to see what's going on. Or has he spotted something else? No, it's just sniffing around. What have you seen? Sky, you say you hope he roars. Well, so do I, Sky. We had him roaring just now, so he is still calling. So hopefully he will give us one more big roar, or at least a couple more big roars, because it's always the best sound in the whole world. And the sun is just coming up now over the eastern horizon, and it's the perfect time to let out one last big, big belting roar for us to enjoy but he's scenting definitely is smelling something I w wonder if he hasn't smelt some females or something you see he's now scent marking as well so he's scraping those back feet urinating and that's to try and then open the soil up to allow that urine to penetrate so that it stays for much longer and it allows this male to leave a trace for a longer period of time but you see he's now walking in exactly the direction that we've been following tracks like i say i wouldn't be surprised if maybe he leads us to another male which would be fantastic although i see he's now lying down oh, my boy why are you lying there this is not the easiest of terrain to negotiate but we shall try our very best it's just one big solid Aardfark burrow in this area at the moment, so I'm just trying to find a way to get closer towards where he is. Let's try and see if we can't just get over here, Senzo. There we go. Now that will be fine for now. We'll see what he does, but at least he's lying down, which is good. It means that he's starting to settle a little bit, and the direction that he's headed has actually taken him away from cheetah cut line a little bit which is good news for us but there's definitely something that caught his attention because he was fairly relaxed and all of a sudden he just stared in that direction lifted his nose started sniffing and then walked straight up it to where we are now and now he's just watching northwards and like i was saying to you the tracks that we followed actually came from this side and and was walking straight towards where he is now and the last track i had is pretty much parallel with where we are now so it'll be interesting to see if there is a second birmingham boy here but he is looking magnificent. His mane is getting very dark now. Ali, you're wanting to know how old Tinio is. Um, Ali, difficult to say because, uh, you know, they, they came from an area outside of the Sabi Sands. I know that we have a rough estimate that they're about just over six years, approaching seven years. So in terms of the individual Birminghams, I'm not 100% sure exactly what age they are he looks a little bit scruffier than what he actually is he's got lots of scarring on his face and that's from fighting with not only his coalition members but with the Nkuhuma pride as well so I think he's about seven years I would say just under seven years old it would be my guess as to how old he is which means that he is just entering his prime generally male lions into their prime at around seven and then they really are at their best shape between seven and twelve years old and it starts to go downhill a little bit from there so He's coming into that prime, prime, prime time of life. And like I was saying, his mane has started to get a lot darker. The, I haven't been seeing much of the Birmingham boys. And Tinho, the f first time I've seen him in a long time, was at that buffalo carcass a few nights ago. And he really is filled out and his mane has become much fuller and definitely a lot darker. It was interesting to see him with Insuku and see how they kind of compared. Insuku is definitely a bigger bodied lion than what Tinyo is, but um, Tinyo seems to have a much darker mane than what Insuku does at the moment, which is, I suppose, 
Y is called Nsuko, which means gold. Now, I wonder... Sensei, so do you want me to go forward so we get rid of the stump that we've got here? And there's a stump that's just in the way there for Senzo, so I'm going to just try and see if I can't just get round this bush. And let's see if I can't get that stump out of the way for Senzo so that he can actually film him without having to worry too much. There we go, Senzo. How's that? Is that better? Wasn't that fun? There's something about tracking male lions when they're roaring and there's footprints and you're trying to keep up with them. It's just the best tracking experience. You know, leopards is a, is a different thing. Leopards is a test of skill and it really is kind of, you, th you have to work your way around and try and find them with lions. It's that big booming roar and that excitement and anticipation as you follow these tracks and hope that you're gonna find them. And then when you actually do see them, it's the best feeling ever. It's normally the nicest is when they're actually just walking down the road and, and, and you're able to find them like that. But we'll take the second best, which is him lying in the nice big grassy area. Oh, what's wrong? Just doing some maintenance. And this, I would imagine, would be before he settles down for the day. Mac, you're wondering if there are still four Birmingham boys? Well, as far as we know, yes. We've not heard any reports to contradict that. And we know that three of them ha were seen yesterday. So Tinyo was seen, and I think in Suku, and I'm not sure who the third one was, but there was two with the Birmingham Pride. I mean, with the Pride. And one that was on its own. I don't know where the fourth one is. I know there's been some that have been hanging around in northern Mala Mala for a bit so I'm not 100% sure where everybody is but as far as I know nothing it says that there's any male lion that's been killed or died anywhere that the Birmingham's roam so there should still be four of them as far as we know and it's interesting with them because they seldom spend time together it's a strange thing the Majingalans were a very different coalition the Majingalans have always seemed to be together at least two or three of them bless you Senzo at least two or three of them together and then they would kind of go apart to mate but then they would come back together quite quickly whereas the Birminghams tend to spend a lot of time either on their own or as a sort of two of them and they only really come together if there's a food item but that's been such a long time since I've actually heard of all four spending time with one another What are you doing, big boy? Makeup girl, you say you would love to feel his mane. It looks so fluffy and soft. Well, I don't know if about that. It's probably quite coarse hair, given that they have dust and all kinds of things that's in it all the time. But it would not be an advisable situation to touch his mane. I think you'd... <laughs> It would not end very well at all. But I have actually touched male lions' manes before, and it's when we've darted, we did a bit of darting of lions um, to test them for TB. And the mane, like I say, is not as soft as it looks. It's a little bit more coarse feeling, and it's just because of all the dust and dirt and things that are around. And as much as they try and groom, they can't really groom behind their ears and around their throat area, so it does get a little bit on the more coarse side it's like if somebody hasn't washed their hair for a while that's the kind of feeling that it gets so it's not as soft as it looks unfortunately but you can see the black tinging coming through on the tips there and hopefully one day once he reaches a little bit older pretty much most of that mane should go black and it'll be a beautiful sight when you do and mane is a very interesting thing because it tends to be different in different parts of the world here in the Kruger area our lions tend to have these multicolored manes, so they have both dark and blonde in their mane. It's it's pretty typical. If you go into the more desert, dry, arid areas, the the males there tend to have very dark black manes. And then in some parts of Africa, you'll find that the male lions actually use manes stay quite blonde. There's in Botswana, there's a few that have very blonde manes. So it's just an interesting thing that in different areas and different places, you see different colorations coming through now it's said that that darkness is there to basically represent to the females that this is a strong powerful male because any male that has to walk around in the African heat with a dark thick collar of fur around his head is going to be a male that is strong and is in his prime and is able to keep other intruders at bay because he wouldn't have that thick black mane if he wasn't 
dominant because he wouldn't be producing nearly as much testosterone so that's the theory behind it and females apparently from the studies that they've done do target the males with darker manes more than the males with lighter manes to mate with so when they are mating you'll find that they try and go after the darker fuller manes then or allow the darker fuller manes to mate with them than the smaller lighter manes but I think he's bedding down for the day if he's grooming the way he is. Esther, you're wondering if a zebra could outrun a lion. Yes, a zebra can outrun a lion. Zebras tend to be able to maintain their pace for a longer period than what a lion does. And that's why lions have to get so close. Now, Esther, if I don't know if you've watched any of our footage from Kenya and the Maasai Mara, you'll find that... Our lions have hunted zebra many, many times there, and they have actually failed quite often. And it's because they've got to get very close, and then they've got to launch that surprise attack and catch the zebras unaware. Because once the zebras get into full stride, then the lions very quickly battle to get anywhere near them and are unable to keep up the pace for long enough to get towards the zebra. So they tire much quicker than what the zebra do. But they run at a similar speed in terms of if you had to get their top speed, they do have a similar speed at about 70 kilometers an hour. So. But like I was saying just now, this grooming process is an, a sign that he's now getting ready just to rest he's he's probably walked quite a bit or we know he's walked quite a bit if it is his tracks that we've been following and he's now going to groom to get ready to get rid of all the parasites ticks and all kinds of other things that he may have picked up over his journey and so he gets rid of that to get himself ready to have a really nice nap he knows the sun is coming up so in a few short hours it's going to get very hot and that means that he's going to have to find somewhere to rest and so i think this is pretty much him done for the evening and this is where his final resting place will be for the day which is fantastic news for us because obviously it means that he should theoretically still be here this afternoon so we might have a whole day of birmingham day which is very pleasant because it means it will chase the monday blues away if we have our cats which is fantastic so hopefully that's going to be where tinua decides to lay down it would be nice though if he let out one last big roar for us it certainly would make me quite happy but look at those eyes Well, Nick, you wondering if I've ever had an animal jump on the vehicle? Well, no, I've never had anything jump on the car. Um, I've had a Daker jump over the bonnet between myself and my tracker, which was quite something. And I've had an Impala male during a rut run straight into the side of the car. But I've never had anything actually physically jump on it, so I've never had any of the lions or leopards or anything like that. Um, I've seen footage of a pride in this area, well, seen it, them doing it to another vehicle, and I've actually seen in myself another vehicle where the lions put their paws on the side of the car, but I've never seen one being sort of jumped on or anything like that. I have heard of it. There apparently was a leopard in the western sector in called Club and Kunzi that jumped on the bonnets of cars every now and then, which I find is a little disconcerting. No, he's decided he's not going to stay here, but he's walking deeper into Juma, which is fantastic news. <laughs> and I'm laughing because I feel sorry for Tax. Tax has just done this big loop to get into the right place, and as he's parked, this lion has now decided to get up and move. So, <laughs> poor Tax is now going to have to reposition once again. Morning, Tax. Score. <laughs> <laughs> go, go. I'm just going to let Tax come through because um, he's got some photographers on board and they would love to obviously get some images of this lion and unfortunately they haven't been able to get to him because well they came all the way around and then he got up and moved so I'm just letting them go in front to give them a chance to see if they can see this male lion and get some nice photos while they are in Africa and also because I've got to try and negotiate a safer way out of here it's one big aardvark burrow and fallen over tree at the moment so just trying to find a way through to keep up with Tinio you can see how fast male lions move you'll see now when I get towards the road that they can really turn it on and, and move quite quickly when they want to so keeping up with them can sometimes be a little bit of a challenge um, 
There's also lots of stumps in this area from last year's drought where the elephants broke down trees and pushed over trees in search of food. So you've got to be a little careful. But look at this. Isn't this beautiful? He's moving through the long grass. Wonderful. So you can see there, it's just, isn't that a picture synonymous with Africa of a big male lion walking through the long white grass? Absolutely fantastic. Now, I believe Tara has had a few gremlin issues and has been battling away with the gremlins. And so it sounds like she's fought them off valiantly and has now found herself some semblance of signal. So. I think let's go across to Tara while we try and keep up with our male line and see where he ends up. Hopefully he's going to lead us to another male. And so while we do that, like I say, let's go across to Tara and see what she's been doing and where she is and what her updates are.